there viewers and welcome back to the self made auto channel today we're working on a 2013 john deere it's a 5055e and it's got the big 2.9 liter in it had to move out of the sun any out tractor right now has about 140 hours on it now i did buy the tractor used back when i had about 60 hours on it uh i guess it was last last year sometime uh at any rate when i purchased it the guy had already done a service on it i guess i would just oil and filter there's not much you do with that low of hours uh, I did notice when I looked in the book at 100 hours it is due uh, to have the transmission filter replaced not the fluid just the transmission filter so we're going to do that um, also to uh, the air filter there's there's a double air filter element that we're going to change we're going to change fuel filter um, because I don't believe he's ever done that um, I just kind of want to get a baseline of, of where the tractor is because I've never really you know gone through it so to speak since I uh, since I've owned it but we have used it quite a bit and just kind of want to get everything so we know it's up to snuff so we're going to start with just some of the stuff we can do with the engines cold you know we're going to do like the fuel filter we'll do the tire pressures and the lube and just whatever belt you do when you're servicing a tractor so this should be the hydraulic filter right here it's all painted green that's behind the right rear tire i don't know if I, i'm going to be able to get that with you folks in the way I'll move you out of the way. We'll crack that baby loose. We got a bucket down here. We'll drain it into that and we'll stick our new filter on. I don't have any filter wrenches at home. I brought this one from work, but I don't know if it's big enough. Baby. I'm thinking the guy in the express suit must have put that on with a ugga dugga gun. Holy smokes. That freaking thing was toy all the way to the end. There was some kind of piss over there. In the... Woo! Woo wee! Not a way to start your morning. Should be working on a Saturday, anyways. Right. Let's drop that bucket. Let's get this o ring off there. Now, hopefully, we have the right filter. hydraulic fluid. I have not been to the John Deere dealer yet, so I think these take some special training fluid. I think it's a John Deere high trans or something. But we do have a filter here from Napper, not a sponsor. There it is. This is the old Napper gold. Schmutz. I think she's pretty, pretty well wiped off, but we're gonna give her a little hydraulic fluid around its flange here. This is where the O-ring goes from the filter. on or put it in the filter because the filter's got a big flange on it and then screw it up on let's give this the old college try i wish i had a wrench big enough for this filter however i do not we may have to take a trip down to napper to get a filter in because i know i don't even have one this big at the shop oh boy 
Oh, this old man ain't got enough lead in his pencil here. Son of a mother. Oh, we gotta go get a filter and suck. Yeah, one minute you're home, you're having fun, you're gonna relax. Next thing you know, you're downtown town. Downtown town. <laughs> you're going downtown chasing tools. So this is a five incher. <laughs> you got a five incher and it's thick. So we'll go down and uh, see if we can't find an oil filter wrench that'll fit that because there's no way I'm spinning that on my hand. All right, I'm back. It's part number 772321 from Nather. They had one in stock. This great big jumbo head. And then we're gonna put it on one way or another here. We'll get her to slip. I may have to move you folks out of the way. It's getting kind of wiggly in here. Oh, look at this. Yeah, baby. And I put it on backwards. First try. Awesome. Oh, the job goes so much smoother when you got the right tool. <laughs> you dummy, I should have known. When I bought the filter, I didn't have a wrench. Oh, well. Live and learn. So now I've got a $22 filter wrench that I don't think we need to use it until I don't know when the fluid needs changing this again. 800 hours or something, I don't know. I'd have to look in the book. But the good news is we have it when we need it. And the other good news is I got to stop at the McDonald's and have me an Iggy McMuffin. Ah, come on, grip, baby. There, she's nice and tight. I'll slip that baby off. It's a little snug down here with all the hydraulic noises. Well, there, that was easy. Not for use with power tools. Do you really think that needed to be put on the box? Or on the tool itself? You know, we just take it back nap and tell them, hey, it didn't fit, jerks. successful one hour later Let me check the old trans fluid or the hydraulic fluid wipe off our stick we'll see how much we need to get if any all right she's just at the a and the ad so we do need to get some hydraulic fluid we're going to have to look in the book I don't know if it's John Deere High Trans A, B, C, D, E, F, G, the semi blend. There's so many different high trans, but yeah, we're right. I don't know if you folks can see it on there, but we're at the A and the ad, so we do need to get some. Get some, but we're going to keep carrying on because I don't have any here. Next, we will take care of the air filter. This is a pretty easy job. Now apparently, when I read in service info, this is reusable and evidently washable. They show it. They actually show 
and service info this outer filter being washed uh, take it out you can bang it out and then they show it being washed and dried uh, the filter is not horribly expensive so uh, I've elected to just replace it now this is the original filter like I say it's seven years old we drive it this year when we were doing our fields it was super super dusty because it's been so stinking dry um, you know I'm not gonna take and chance it by you know trying to wash it out and stuff uh, so this is the secondary filter I'm gonna go get the new ones I suppose if you got to buy air filters every every so often it's not too bad so we're just gonna wipe out the housing make sure it's free of debris get that cleaned out don't want to restrict and she is turbocharged so I don't know if it's our secondary or primary the first one in it's a classic 9599 from Napper so there she is there's the new one there's the old one hey look a Madonna <laughs> we'll stick that in there and that just sits in there it doesn't really lock in or anything it's kind of goes into a little recess and then we've got the other primary or secondary filter we're going to call it your classic 9221 from Napper oh she's shiny and this one quarter turns goes in there so you can see the difference old new stick that bad mamma jam up in there goes in and just locks that's ooh look at that America major in America I'll wipe this little guy out and then let's see we'll put this back in so it's inlet so that must face down because that's the inlet right it's my assumption well there, that was easy. So next we're going after the fuel filter. Got one here, it's your classic 3548. You know where it's from. It's our fuel water separator. Let's have a gander at this little fella. And I assume once we do this, we're gonna have to reprime the system. So there it is, it appears that, I don't know if you guys can see it, you can't see what's in the camera, it's too bright and shiny, shiny outside. It's bright and shiny. Uh, looks like we have a ring that holds it on and that'll go up in there and then evidently seal in its hole. So let's see, let's set this down so we don't drop it too many times. Of course the loader is right in the way. So I'm assuming that we just unscrew that. Oh, look at that. It's like a big, uh, big coarse thread there and then let's get our bucket ready because we're gonna make a mess stick that under here with any bit of luck we'll get diesel fuel all over everything not bad fella not bad so there's the old one so we'll take our ring off Throw that in the bucket. We'll stick the ring on the new one. Make sure we got no schmutz on this thing. Looks pretty good. Schmutz free. Uh, uh, seriously, Napper. They got a different water separator on the bottom, so you got to get it just so past the. Uh, hydraulic line there and wiggle it up on and we'll take this fella and it's big coarse thread mother lover we'll turn that on now this must be the primer you gotta unscrew it or anything nope you don't so let's get a screwdriver and here's one bleeder here We'll crack that loose. We'll see if we can just bleed it at the housing. Uh, we may have to go to the injector pump and bleed it there also, but let's bleed the air 
out of the housing and then we'll start it and see if it uh, sucks full of air and shuts off. If I, if I recall when I was looking in service data to do this, they have you, I believe they have you bleed it here, bleed it at the return line on the injector pump and then there's a bleeder on the injector pump too. They have you bleed it there, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna make a mess here. Get the air pushed out of it and then start it up. She's just flowing straight fuel now. Get that bleeder closed off. Wipe off our mess. And then we'll give her some pumps. Yeah, she got straight. I can hear it squeezing through the injector pump over there. It must be through the return line, I'm assuming. So we'll clean it off. Let's make sure that the water separator on the bottom is tight. So we'll loosen it up until it pees a little. I'll tighten it up. Wipe that off. You never want to assume, you know, like if you get a new oil pan or a filter like this, something has a drain on it, never just assume it's tight. Always double check it well, that part's gonna be shiny now okay let's fire this pig up notice when I had it there running my gap across the top of the lock ring here was not even all the way across it was touching on the front and had a gap in the back so I cracked that back loose and when you tighten it's kind of chintzy uh, but when you tighten it it has a definitive click that it latches into and then now I see it's even all the way across I must not have had that just so uh, when I did initially so I guess be careful of that so we got some of the stuff done. I'm going to leave it running for a while, let it warm up so we can dump the oil and filter out of the engine. Uh, I'm going to take the bucket and raise the front end up and level up our front hubs because we got to check the oil level in those and check the oil level in the front axle. Um, a few other maintenance items. Got to do some moving. It's got some grease fittings on the front pivots, of course on the bucket and stuff. So yeah. So the front axle has a planetary gear set here in the outer part of the hub and we need to check the oil level on it would be my suggestion is to have the uh, check hole up high when you pull the plug out that's the other part of the sun gear looks like I don't know if anybody's ever had this out but I see the uh, washer here is a little bit smushed and then we're gonna bring her down to the level to the level level right where the fluid's going to spill out which is right there and we are slightly on the uphill side of course i've got the front axle you know picked up a little bit i'm trying to keep it just about level but definitely plenty of fluid in there because it's right to that level right there so that's good we're going to leave well enough alone we'll stick this back in there we'll have to keep an eye on it with that wonky washer to make sure it seals which hopefully it does, and I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side to check it.
And the other thing we're going to check when we have the axle slightly elevated. Have a look, see in here. Made in China? I thought John Deere was American. Apparently not. That's all right. I'm going to be a little bit cautious here. I wish you got some pressure. No vent on this front axle. Well, there's that. Now we're going to take and slightly tip it this way. We're going to give it a little reach in here. Oh boy, she's right there. Whoa, whoa, tip her back, fella. Tip her back. All right. Yeah, I love the smell of gear oil in the morning. So now we have to grease the front axle pivot. So this is where your front axle uh, pivots. There's a couple of these. So we're going to give them a few shots of grease. Pump it till it explodes. No, we're not going to do that. We'll give her four or five pumps in there. Now there's one straight ahead of this also. And prior to sticking it in, go in there. Make sure the edge is cleaned out. Get all the grit and the schmutz out of there. Lots of schmutz on this job. Sometimes these things get, I just pressure wash it because it was pretty filthy from last time we used it. And a lot of mud and crap gets jammed in these. So we try to keep them cleaned out. That way your grease gun fits good and you're not getting, you're not getting schmutz right into the nipple. Pretty decent. Good enough for government work, anyways. Now I'll we'll lock that baby on. I'll give this one some pumps. And three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and just one more. Seems good. Yeshiba. Where you been? Huh? You're all out of breath and you're all wet. Where'd you go? Out that way? She likes to go on a morning meander. Sometimes she's gone for a few hours. I don't know where she goes, but she's always out of breath and wet when she gets back. So I don't believe that the front joints, no, because they don't have a centering yoke on those. And I don't see any grease fittings on them. I, say, I don't believe those are greasable. We'll just check, make sure there's no binding. That one's good. I'll go check the other side. Next thing we're going to do is check our tire pressures on the front. These are the 9524s. Big honkers, let's see what we have in them. Right now, we're about 28 pounds. So we're gonna run them with maximum ballast. You're supposed to run them about 30 PSI. And then if you do a lot of work on side hills, you can bump them up about four pounds more. So 90% of my property is side hill. And I do notice when I have the bucket full of you know any kind of material, you know, front tires do get squatty, especially on a side hill, they start to fold pretty good. So we're gonna run them up about 34 PSI. And then the rear, I don't have a gauge for the rear, a technical gauge, because the rear tires are loaded. And service data tells you to check with the valve stem at the bottom, which would put liquid in your line. And I don't know why that makes a difference. But evidently it does. We're gonna check them anyways, but we're gonna do it with the valve stem at the top. So there's that one. Well, that baby leaks pretty good. So I'll go do the other side. We're gonna have to look up and see what the pressure is for that. I imagine probably 13, 14 pounds. So the rear tire here, I rolled the valve stem up to the top. So these tires are about 75% full of beet juice, essentially. Rim guard, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's not calcium, these are tubeless. We're going to clear the stuff out of the line first. So you can see the crap that sprays out of it. I don't know if I dare stick my gauge on there stuff is nasty it smells uh smells like molasses it's kind of some stinky stuff let me grab a different gauge before we do that let's go like this let's just let a little air out and see if it blasts out at the end yeah shoot all oh, this stuff stinks let me say it smells just it smells very sweet like molasses i don't know we're gonna have to probably buy a calcium gauge because if we stick this on here and that comes up to 15. That's about what I wanted to run them at anyways. They're supposed to be at 12 to 24, depending on how much ballast or what kind of a equipment you're hauling. So 
we're gonna leave it at that for the time being because obviously there's stuff still stuck to the rim the calcium gauges they're all plastic and the gauge comes out and it's spring loaded it pushes back in to push all the crap out of the gauge so I'm gonna check the other side make sure that's in at or around where this one is and we'll leave it for the time being I'm not having any problems not having any traction problems or anything like that just kind of want to get a baseline where we are uh, why do they use beet juice uh, so typically use uh, calcium chloride or magnesium but you have to have a tube in your tire and then when you get a leak it rots out your rim so you got to be really careful with that stuff now that it's all warmed up we're going to change the oil actual engine oil now I happen to have an oil filter wrench that fits this thankfully I'll crack this baby loose let her spill down the frame from the sound of it when I bought it off this fella he way over serviced the engine I don't know if that's actually a thing but he changed the engine oil a lot <laughs> for the amount of hours it had on it. They always use John Deere filters and oil and whatnot, but I don't have a John Deere dealer close by, so I do have a napper, which is good. They carry a ton of heavy duty stuff, agricultural stuff. However, the one thing they don't do is sponsor us. I wouldn't want them to either, to be honest with you. Because then if they, you know, have a crappy product, I want to be able to tell you guys it's a crappy product. And if you have a sponsor, you can't do that. You always got to say, the Napa 7076 filter is the best filter on the market. So we'll lube up her O-ring here with a little bit of oil. Always use new clean oil when doing that, of course. Spin this little guy on. Where's that filter made? Right here in America. Wow. I'll spin that on. Can't really get my control. Yeah, I guess we can we can keep going. Probably what we'll do, because I can't get a great grip on it. We'll do what they do with the jiffy loop. We'll put this filter wrench on here and tighten her as snug as we can get it. Not really. We just want to make sure it ain't going to wiggle off on us because that would be a very bad day. Shiny. We'll clean all this off, but first we'll get the oil pan draining. Get out of the old Carolina Creeper here, aka the piece of foam board. Works well for these outside driveway projects. What size is that? Ah, look at that first try. Ended up being a 16. Mm-hmm. Move these out of the way. Hopefully it's less than five gallons. I didn't look to see how much it takes. Hopefully I have enough oil. That would suck. Don't drop it in the bucket. Get it all over my freaking hand. That's a little on the warm side. <coughs> We're waiting for the oil to finish drizzling. We'll come back. There's a couple of grease fittings on your rear axle bearings. We'll make sure we get those. We'll give them a couple pumps. And three and four and five and six. Then we'll go to the other side. There's a few grease fittings on the three point hitch here. So we'll give these about one shot there. I see it pop out the threads. And I'll give her a shot here. So this side of your three point hitch is just used, you use this to level your three-point hitch so it's going to level from arm to arm and then you just flip this around that locks it now this one over here is just you would have to change this one and this one to change your overall lifting height of your three-point hitch but so this one probably won't take much grease at all we'll just give it a little shot there so it comes up through the threads just keep that from seizing up in case we ever have to change it someday the implements that we pull um, this thing's all set up for it already so the only one that we ever move is this here. You know, for example, if you're pulling a box blade and you want to 
tip it at an angle so you can cut a ditch. Um, or if we have our tiller on it, we'll level it up so we get a nice even till. Um, so yeah, that's that's that back here on our upper link. Um, we could unthread this, keep this from seizing up here in the future. It doesn't have a grease fitting on it, but you can take and uh, one's left hand thread, one's right hand thread. So this is going to be used to to level your implement front to back, you know, to change the pitch on it. So if you have a plow, you know, how, how it hits the ground, how the land slides, hit the furrow, and or if you're using your tiller, you know, how level that is, or how, how much tilt you have on your back blade. So we'll just unthread this a little bit here. This does not have a grease fitting on it. One of my little Kubota does, which is kind of handy. Cause you don't want these season up because they're kind of a pain if they do so now that we have that out we'll just take a little bit of our grease a little bit out there and we'll just smear it on the threads and then we'll screw her back in just a little bit of preventative stuff there not absolutely necessary they're pretty coarse threads Ouch. so we'll just kind of smear that around Loom up the shaft, I like to say. We call them a Johnson bar. I think, I don't know what they call them, top link or rock link, I don't know. They've got some kind of special name. We'll go the other way with it. We're just about to the end. Um, and then where this hooks, uh, this actually hooks to like a valve per se. So, because this tractor has what they call draft control, and it can tell, like let's say for example, you're pulling a plow, you know, you got like a three bottom plow behind this, and you're pulling, and you come into some hard ground, depending on how you have your draft control set, when it starts pulling on this top link, this will actually pivot out, it moves a valve, and it will automatically pick your implement up out of the ground. I guess that's the easiest way I can explain that. Yeah, it's called draft control. So that's what that does. And this one is sensed through through the top link here. So it's kind of handy, you know, if you're plowing ground and part of your ground is, let's say, you know, loamy or sandy, and then you get into some, you know, real heavy clay or, or rock, you're not, you're not messing with your plow, picking it up and down. If you get your draft control set right, it'll, it'll do it for you. So there's that. Now I'll just wipe this schmutz off wipe a little bit on the threads that are exposed so they don't get cruddy or we could just run it all the way down probably be the smartest thing to do just trying to make a video folks I'm running out of things to do the other thing we'll do while we're back here this is the water drain on the bottom of the fuel tank so we'll crack this open See if anything dribbles out of it. Which she just barely dripping there. Is that fuel or water? I can't tell. Does it smell? Hopefully it's not water. I'll tell you what. We pull the lid off the fuel tank. It should be vented, but maybe this thing's just a little bit plugged up. She may be slightly plugged there, fella. Let's see if it's plugged we'll take it open it back up here where's the slot there it is don't blow in it we'll blow across it hey now we're peeing oh boy wasn't ready for that where are you oh she's peeing all over so there that worked good thing we caught all the diesel fuel in an approved container put the lid back on the fuel tank um, so I didn't want to blow into it in case there was some junk sitting in front of it. So we just blew across it, you know, created that high pressure out here, low pressure in there, and whoosh, sucked out anything that might have been in there. Put some of the schmutz around our cap here. It's kind of a snug fit. Hits the fan shroud. Like I 
say it, she's a big 2.9 liter. Oh, lots of dirt on there. It's a three cylinder turbo diesel. A whole whopping 55 HP. Oh, that's a pretty piss poor mold. It's kind of, the hole's kind of half plugged. Big piece of plastic flashing in there. So we'll set that to the side. I think it's only 40 some PTO horsepower. Which is enough for what we need to do. It's kind of an oddball sized tractor for, for a farmer. You know, they wouldn't use it for much. At least the farms around here. You know, most farmers around here tractors are you know 200 horsepower plus but this that might be used like on a small farm for you know raking hay or you know moving round bales just kind of just general purpose around the farm type stuff you don't even really use these to clean barns anymore because you, you know you'd have a skid steer so like I say it's kind of a kind of a weird size tractor I got a heck of a deal on it when I bought it I'm super happy about that um, Okay, let's find a funnel. And we did use at least, I don't know, probably two and a half gallons, two gallons of oil anyways. Quite a bit, the bucket's about half full and we had a little bit of hydraulic fluid in there already. So we got some shell Rotella. Ah, the lid went right in the damn bucket of oil. Can you believe that? I can. I think I've got extra buckets around with lids. So we'll pour this in. I'm using some 15 dub 40. Looks like she's gonna go in kind of slow. So we'll get this filled up. Probably should look to see how much it uses, but. Worst case scenario, you gotta pull the drain plug. Assuming you put it back in. Close we are. <laughs> First try. I think he's dead nuts. Yep. You can see it or not, you probably I can't even see where you can see. Well, we're right on top of the cross hatch. Well now it's creeping down, but Trust me. Wow, that's pretty good. Some days it's better to be lucky than it is good. So I just blasted out of the radiator. Now the only other thing to really check under the hood is the coolant level, and it is full. And then I usually just kind of give a visual inspection, you know, check belt tension, uh, make sure that's good, make sure nothing looks like it's leaking or loose or falling off, anything like that. Ooh, there's, there's the big turbo back there. Humongous. <laughs> so, so that's that, we're just about done. I think we just need to lube up the front end, and then usually I'll take the my pressure wash I must have forgot this time whereas it here all the bugs and the crap that comes through the radiator and gets hit in the fan it kind of slinks all over everything uh, just get that crud cleaned off and then make sure your front engine screens you know the screens on the hood are cleaned out because that, that usually collects the majority of the weeds and stuff if you're brush hogging now really all that's left to do is go through we're gonna grease the bucket so I'll give them a couple shots each grease fittings on this usually prior to doing this I did it off camera what I'll do because people are gonna think it's pretty anal retentive so these get greased quite often so particularly if you're using the loader a lot I think you know service manual will tell you every 10 hours to grease it 
uh, you just kind of thing you just grease when you remember but what I do is you're greasing these pins obviously grease oozes out so I usually just take a bunch of blue rags and I'll get in here and, and scoop out some of the old grease that's squeezing out otherwise it starts to make a huge mess uh, which is fine it doesn't hurt anything but I don't know I kind of like it shiny and green so as the old grease squeezes out I just reach in there and scoop it out before it makes a huge mess when your tractor gets old and all scratched up and and beat up then you don't worry about it and there you have it folks that is that uh, so we went through we did the hydraulic filter we greased it um, you know tire pressure is the best we could we do have to get a different gauge for the rear tires because they're loaded um, did the fuel filter did both air filters uh, checked all the fluids that can be checked I do have to get some John Deere high guard for the uh, for the transmission for the hydraulics so we'll get some of that get some of that air from John Deere uh, I don't like to mix fluids uh, in regards to that now if we're changing a fluid like completely draining it then you know it's not such a huge ordeal um, but we'll just keep that because that doesn't need to be changed for quite a long time it was just that filter was due at 100 hours so you know 40 hours ago or wherever it was it was due so better late than never um, we'll just take it I'll just take it for a shake you know next time we use it and I'll, I'll check all of our filters and plugs and everything we had out check them for leaks and then we're good to go so that's that. Hope you enjoyed that. There's a couple other little things I'll do, like the, the seat track. You know, I usually spritz that with a little fluid film because when Mrs. O uses it, she likes to have the seat all the way forward. So a um, couple little things there. At some point, I do want to go through, and I have to bleed out the rear brakes on it. I've never been very satisfied with the brakes on it since I've gotten it. They have, you have to hit them and then hit them again. You have to pump them to get them to come up hard. Now, they do work. They just have a really long stroke. It feels like it has air in the system. Uh, so this has a set of hydraulic brakes in the back kind of similar to a car is a big piston in there that pushes you know the brake discs uh, in the rear axle assembly uh, that reservoir is filled from the actual hydraulics on it has its reservoir then it you know feeds into uh, the big brake pistons and stuff so I imagine it has air in it at least that's how it feels to me so there is some bleeders on the back uh, I want to make sure I have plenty of hydraulic fluid first in case something goes haywire there. So hopefully I get that straightened out. Um, other than that, that's it. Um, I don't know what else to say. Uh, why don't you guys go down in the comment box and say something down there. While you're down there, subscribe, ring that bell. Find us on our socials, Facebook, Insta. I can't even see my thing, so I don't even know if it's pointing at me. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.